What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Greek. In today's video I will show you a huge set, which is, at least as far as I know, the last Technic set of 2021, the CAT D11 or D11T Bulldozer. I already made a preview video about the box and everything we could see on the official photos. If you are interested, you can watch it by clicking on the link in the top right corner. But here's a little anomaly on the box I received, let me show you that. This is the photo on lego.com and this is the box I got. Do you see any differences? Yeah, exactly. My box says D11T and the one on lego.com says D11. According to some wise people on the Eurobricks forum who obviously know much more about these beasts than me, D11 should be the simplified name of the latest generation of these cat dozers, so that's the correct one. Anyway, it will be interesting to see the box design going forward, which version wins. Other than that, there's not much to see here. The big bulldozer is on the front, boring 18 plus box design and, well, hold on a second. So this is the first 18 plus control plus set. Oh, so many pluses. So far 18 plus was the category for the shelf queens. I'm a bit afraid how this affects the functionality of the set. Anyway, if we check the back of the box, here's another strange change. On the version on lego.com, there's a photo in the bottom left corner showing a prototype version of the dozer with different parts and structure. Now on this box, we have a photo of the real one. Actually, the whole lower section is rearranged and the photos have changed. Here are the two versions side by side. This seems to be really weird, I can't recall any boxes recently that were different from the official photos. The box is very big by the way, it has the exact same dimensions as the Lee Pairs box, and the same price too. But before jumping to that, let's open the box. The set has 3854 pieces, the recommended retail price is 450 euros or dollars. As you see there's a big white cardboard box, then comes the rest of the bags. Hmm. Apparently one of them does not want to come out. Here you go. Let's open the white box as well. Wow, this was pretty full. We've got tons of bags. There are actually 28 numbered bags. The hub and the motors without the usual extra cardboard box and the manuals with the sticker sheet. There are two very thick and slightly wavy manuals and a surprisingly small sticker sheet. The manual begins with two photos of the Lego version and the original face to face. Interestingly, the real one seems to have a triple shank reaper, and the color scheme of the blade does not match either. They did not find these details that important. The next page shows some details of the set, then we get a few words about the D11T. It's again D11T and not D11, interesting. Some more photos of the real deal, with some additional information about its great features. On the next pages we see Marcus Kosman, the designer of the set, and here we have the prototype photo that went missing from the box, along with some others. An interesting fact on the next two pages, the LEGO version of the D11T uses modules for the assembly, just like the real one. Few instructions for the app and how the functions should work, then we see the 8 building stages and we are ready to go. Surprisingly we only have two pages for the part lists, this model does not use a high variety of parts for sure. Now let's start building. The build begins with the differential, and we almost immediately need to add the two large angular motors. Apparently the new flip-flop beams will be heavily used in this set. They can provide an excellent structural rigidity with the connections in multiple directions. It is quite surprising to see these wheelhouse being used in a bulldozer, but I guess they were chosen because of the built-in heavy gear reduction. This eliminates the need of a more complex solution with standard LEGO gears. Here's the hub. And apparently we still get the usual version with the snap-on battery cover, no signs of that mysterious one with the screws from the Zetros press photos. An interesting new style of highlighting the placement of the parts. This is how the build looks like at the end of bags 1. The second bags begin with the two large motors, it will be interesting to see how they are used. As you see we will have quite a few gears, and this is only the beginning. Yep, it's getting better and better. Here comes the linear actuator in black. Actually only the light bluish grey part is black, the bottom is still dark bluish grey. As you see, besides the color change there were other changes as well, the connection to the other piece is now different. Besides that the full extended length seems to be identical. It is not highlighted in the manual, but make sure to pay attention to the position of these gears. If you add one of them the other way around, the linear actuators will work in the opposite direction. Time to attach the two main sections built so far. Not the easiest thing to do, there are a couple of areas to pay attention to, but it works. A misleading photo if you don't pay extra attention, I thought the upper axle hole needs to be used on that L-shaped half beam, but it's actually the lower one. 
This contraption, by the way, will be apparently used to access the on-off button on the hub. Cable management is tricky. It's nicely done for one of the driving motors, but the other one here is supposed to have the cable folded right below that axle that rotates. I'm not sure if this is the best idea in the world. Might get the cable damaged on a longer run. I might be wrong, but I think it's better to keep it folded here over the motor. Luckily, the cable seems to fit just fine below this piece. So at this stage, there's supposed to be a test apparently in the Control Plus app, which is great. My problem is that I don't have yet access to the version of the app that has the profile for this set, and I won't get access until the embargo is over. I will set up a profile in the Powered Up app to see what can be tested and controlled. So, here are two sliders for the two tracks, and as you see, both motors will drive that red gear through the differential, I assume that one will drive the fake engine. Fun fact, if you push one motor forward and the other backward to turn around, the fake engine will not run. I added one button that simply rotates the L motor of the gearbox to one of the endpoints as calibration, and two others that rotate it by 90 degrees to switch between the functions. You can see the orange wave selector in action and how it switches between the four positions for the different functions. It is quite obvious that besides drive, you can only operate one function at a time with this setup. The black slider controls the function, here is the first one, this controls the elevation of the blade. The second one drives the rear linear actuators, that is for the ripper elevation. The third one will drive the mechanism raising and lowering the ladder through that warm gear on the top. And the final fourth one is for the blade tilt through the future linear actuators on the side. After building the base for the ripper and adding the sprocket wheels to the hubs, here we are at the end of BEX2. Here comes the massive V12 engine, luckily it's not bigger because it's already quite repetitive to build. As expected, it is driven through the differential, as I showed you earlier. It becomes faster when both motors are used and stops if we turn around with the dozer. But the engine is far from being finished, the turbochargers and an impressive amount of piping is added to make this 3-ton beast even more realistic. If you remember that small tank gear on the front, that one now drives a shaft on the left that drives that horizontal axle on the top. The first stickers to apply on those side panels and the first usage of the 5x7 frames that are new in this set in yellow. Then comes the top cover of the engine bay, a bit tricky to put in place but it fits. Not sure if the set is worth to buy only for the long steering racks, but this is an impressive amount used for the grill. After adding the massive exhaust pipes and other accessories on the hood, time to attach the linear actuators to the front with some lights and railings, and this is the end of back 3. Back 4 begins with this structure that we can usually find in cranes or outriggers, but I don't think that will be the case here. Do you see this tank gear and the small wheels? Well, I will have to use tons of them. Here is the first roller, I think I will be building this for the next 100 pages or so. Well, apparently not only those. A pretty interesting use of the linear actuator base, this mechanism will be used to tighten the tracks. I made a mistake a few steps earlier, that short half beam was supposed to be horizontal and not vertical, now I can proceed with all these. Time to attach the track frame to the chassis, probably not the easiest thing to do on camera. After spending a good 30 minutes with the other side, here is the model at the end of BEX4. BEX5 begins with an interesting combination of pieces. Another strange assembly here, for the first sight I thought I made a mistake. As it turns out you need to rotate the parts in a very specific way, it almost feels like an illegal collection. So here is our assembly so far, I guess this will be the mechanism responsible for the ladder. There's a heavy duty clutch gear built in for protection and a lot of gears involved. Yet another unconventional alignment with all these angled parts. Apparently this is the base and the armrest for the seat that is slightly angled. By the end of BEX 5 we have a quite detailed cockpit with lots of instruments and gauges. BEX 6 adds more details to the body and the cabin, this is the roof piece. We continue the detailing with the fire suppression system and the railings. Here is a rare appearance of the 60 module long axles. They are mostly used in non-technic sets, the last one was the famous Mobile Crane MK2 from 2013. Here comes the motorized ladder. This set will provide you with a huge amount of black connectors for sure. After adding even more black connectors, it's time to attach this assembly to the main build. The last piece of the puzzle before moving to back 7. Back 7 begins with the Reaper. You can see how the angled internals are constructed. Time to attach it to the main build. 
Here comes one of the disappointments of the set, the fake linear actuators on the top of the Reaper. It's disappointing because it is fake, and also because of the missing one round 2x2 plate that leaves the supporting axle exposed and those tubes sliding on it. I don't understand why it was not possible to add another plate, that way there won't be any gaps and it still perfectly fits in place. Do you have any reasonable guesses? Let me know in the comments. Adding the lower support for the blade and the mechanism that will control the tilt. This is an interesting piece, some sort of stabilizer for the blade I guess. Time to assemble a few track pieces, only 2 times 58 This is the new track element and here is the previous one for comparison. The width is obviously different and the profile as well. The new one feels to be somewhat more flexible but it's still hard plastic and not rubber. Maybe it's only the width difference, I'm not sure. So 2 times 58 adds a lot of pieces, almost 70 cm per track to be precise and we also have two spares. Mounting the tracks is not an easy feat, as it turns out I need to pull back the front sprocket almost all the way to make it fit. Bag 8 is all about the huge blade, and this is only the beginning. This is probably a less exciting phase of the build as it is quite repetitive, somewhat similar to the bed of the Volvo hauler, but at least you can zip through the last 100 pages fairly quickly. One thing is for sure, this thing is massive. We are very close to the end, adding the visibility perforations on the top of the blade. The final step is to mount the blade, and this is it, we are finished. Just look at this thing, it is truly massive. For comparison, here is the Porsche 911 Targa, it would comfortably fit in the blade. If you want a quick size comparison, here is the Leaper excavator next to it. There are lots of details on the outside, all the railings, the lights, exhausts and other stuff, it looks great. The cabin has the suicide doors and the detailed cockpit with all the instruments and gauges. We can take a look at the engine bay as well, the doors can be opened on both sides. I'm not a dozer expert so cannot really judge the authenticity compared to the real deal, but based on the photos it seems pretty right to me. As I mentioned previously, I don't have yet the Beta Control Plus F with the profile for this set, so that will be presented in a separate video next week. I have this simple control setup created in the Powered Up app, I will use it to demonstrate the functions. There will be things that we can already judge as the app won't make a difference, but the overall conclusion will only come in the next video. So we can turn on the hub with this half beam in the engine bay. The two motors driving the tracks can be used all the time. The speed and agility of the model is fairly good, it can turn around quickly. Since the fake engine is driven through the differential, the engine runs when either of the motors is used, but it will stop when they run in the opposite direction. The tension of the tracks can be adjusted manually with this knob on the side. Climbing abilities are fairly good, the dozer can easily climb the two thick manuals. Whatever fits under the blade, that won't cause an issue to climb over. It also has enough power to turn around on a carpet, which is much better than the leap hair. Not having clutches in the drivetrain and the presence of the wheelhouse with the gear reduction definitely helps. Now about the functions, there are four of them. The first is lifting the blade. It is fairly slow, takes quite some time to go from end to end. The second is blade tilt, but that's actually at the other end of the gearbox, so I need to shift through all the functions. This is a bit faster, as you can see at the lowest forward position, the D11T can actually lift itself up a tiny little bit. On the other side, the uppermost position with the blade tilted back is pretty concerning, let me show you that. As you can see, with the blade tilted back, if I try to raise the blade up, there are some parts colliding here way before the actuators reach their endpoints. I'm sure this will be taken into consideration in the Control Plus profile with the calibration, but with custom controllers we will need to add some extra trickery, because as you can see, it can stress the parts before the clutches in the linear actuators are engaged. The third function is the Reaper lifting. Due to the fake actuators on the top, there's no tilt function here, not even manual. As I see, this function is really for the look only, since the Reaper cannot go below ground level, it stops right above it. 
I know it's a toy and technically you would not be able to do anything with the Reaper anyway, but it's kind of disappointing. The last function is also something for the show. The ladder can be opened and closed. That one is pretty fast actually, and is the only mechanism that has a built-in clutch. So, as I said, I won't draw any final conclusions about the set yet, but I have to tell you that I'm a bit biased at this point. The building experience was great, not too much repetition and there were a lot of things going on. But from a playability standpoint, I'm afraid the Control Plus profile won't be able to add very much to the experience. Speed and power seems to be okay, but the functions can only be engaged separately and only blade lift and tilt makes sense anyway. Adding the hefty price tag to the equation, Remember, we are talking about 450 euros or dollars, and I'm even less convinced. Anyway, let's wait a few more days for the app to test the final experience. According to my sources, the access should be granted on the 15th, and I will post my video as soon as possible after that. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. How do you like the set so far? What do you expect from the app? And so on. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap that notification bell so you won't miss the next episode of the Cat D11T review and also my other LEGO videos. See you next time, bye bye!